Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Tinker. Today we are going to play with the Google Assistant and Local Fulfillment. We will try to configure it both through Nabucasa, where it is already pre-configured, and also standalone DIY Google Assistant integration. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we proceed with today's video, I really would like to thank everyone who joined my YouTube channel and become a YouTube channel member. Thank you very much for all of your support. And also thanks to everybody who liked, watched or subscribed to my channel. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And now let's talk about Google Assistant and local fulfillment. Version 2022.2 .2 brought one new thing, and that is, Google Assistant integration can now be set up to use local fulfillment, thanks to Loex Sangers. Please note that this only applies to manual setup. This is already handled automatically when using a Home Assistant Cloud or Nabucasa. But to be sure that you are using this functionality, we will first go through Nabucasa setup and see if you have all the prerequisites turned on. But you may be wondering what is local fulfillment? Well, actually, local fulfillment is still part of the cloud process, but instead of the commands going through the cloud, through the integration of the component or device, they are instead using Google devices on your network to call and activate service or device. So, for example, if you would now turn on or off the light, it would know that this device that is also registered with the Google Assistant is available locally and it would use a local command to call it. Yeah, I know, this is very simplified, but if you want to learn more about the local fulfillment, what it does, how it does and what it works, and what you have to do to make it work, I will be leaving a developer link in the description of the video. But let's jump straight into Nabucasa. In order for this integration to work, of course, you have to have activated your Nabucasa Home Assistant Cloud service. It has to be logged in and active. But besides that, you also need to activate Google Assistant inside the configuration for Home Assistant Cloud. If you still haven't done so, scroll down to Google Assistant and tick box here. You will be warned that you need to activate Home Assistant Cloud skill for Google Assistant. And yes, the next step is to activate this on your mobile phone. You either need to open Google Home app if you have it installed in your home, or you have to start Google Assistant and then go to the setup process. More information about the setup process can also be found on the configuration page of Nabucasa. You have to go to Google Home app, select the plus icon in the upper left corner, set up device, and then works with Google. Search for Home Assistant Cloud by Nabucasa and add it. Of course, you need to authorize here. You have to use the credential that you use for Nabucasa, and that's it. But for local access, this is not the only thing that you need to make sure. Local fulfillment or local communication for local fulfillment between the Google devices as a service on one side and your end devices or home assistant on the other side require you to have non-secure connection. If you are using internally inside your home secure connection or HTTPS with the SSL certificate, this will not work. So make sure that internally you are using pure HTTP. And this is also described here in the section local communication. The Google devices will discover your home assistant instance by using the MDNS or UDP broadcast. The Google devices still need an internet connection, so make sure also that there is a possibility for your Google Nest or similar devices to exit to the internet. And that should be it. Now your system should work, as it said, out of box with Nabucasa, Google Assistant and uh, local fulfillment. But now let's look at the more complex version on how to enable local fulfillment if you are not using Nabucasa. A link on the documentation on the Home Assistant website will be in the description of the video. And there are a couple of steps that we will need to do. First of all, you already need to have Google Assistant set up and ready for this to work. We will have to open the project that we created previously. We will have to do a couple of tasks and that will include uploading one JavaScript file. And it should work. So let's start the process. 
this is my project that I've created previously. Let me open it. We have to click on develop. URL that you are using as a fulfillment URL should be here. This is the one where your Home Assistant instance is exposed towards the Google Assistant or Google services. On the documentation page, and I will be providing both link to the documentation, as I mentioned previously, but also link to this JavaScript file, we have to download this JavaScript file. And then we have to add it to the Upload JavaScript File button. Upload JavaScript file, browse, And this is this app.js or JavaScript file used for both Node and Chrome. Let's press Upload. We have it here. We now have to add device scan configuration. We will press on plus new scan config. Protocol will be MDNS. And from the documentation page, we will just paste here the MDNS service name. We now have to press Save. It takes some time for this information to be passed through to our devices and also for our devices then locally to do the MDNS query. It can take, according to documentation, up to 30 minutes. And also the next step, after 30 minutes, it is suggested that you restart your home assistant. If you do not want to wait 30 minutes, the other option is to restart all your Google connected devices. That way they will pull the new configuration and start fresh with this local fulfillment enabled. If there are any errors or problems, you can try and use this for debugging from Chrome. And this is it. I'll now have to wait half an hour, I will restart my Home Assistant, and we will see if now our devices respond faster. Now let me show you the difference between using the Google Voice activated control of the lights before and after enabling local fulfillment. And as a third example, I will also show you how fast Google reacts now when using the touch screen. So let's look at three examples. Okay, turn the bar off. Hey, turn the bar off. Okay. Turn the bar on. Yeah, the difference for local fulfillment and non-local fulfillment when using voice is very hard to see but that's also very hard to measure. Why? Voice processing is not done locally, at least not 100%. The wake up word is processed locally, but rest of the data is sent to the cloud and then processed and the command is sent back to Google device. But if we look at the touch screen, where everything is processed locally, meaning when I touch the screen, it automatically sends the local command, you definitely can see a difference it reacts instantly, when I said instantly in less than one second. So can it improve your overall experience? Well, yes, but it also largely depends on what other connectivity issues you may or may have not with the Google Cloud. Remember, as I mentioned, even with the local fulfillment, part of the task is still done via the Cloud. The thing that is done now locally, that should speed up this process, is the sending of the commands between the Google Assistant device on one side and your devices on the other side. I'm not 100% sure, but I think also that most of those devices or applications that are using local fulfillment still have to have fallback, meaning that even if there is a problem with the local fulfillment, the fulfillment itself will be processed by the cloud. So, what are your thoughts? Do you think that this can improve the overall experience of Home Assistant? Do you think that this has impact on privacy, because now requests are processed locally? Or maybe you don't see any benefit of using local fulfillment? If you did find this video useful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It means not just a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you still haven't subscribed, Please subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss my next video or stream. 
if you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server. Or if you're feeling lucky and YouTube doesn't delete your comment, you can always leave comment down in a comment section below. Until the next time, bye bye and have fun.